<laughs> Lily Adams, look at you in Australia. Yep, damn right, down under. Thanks for doing this. Do we have a really bad connection? Sorry, I can't hear you. Yeah. Yeah, you got to. Haley, you might have a really bad connection. Do I? Hmm. I think so. I, I, can you Let's hear see. me okay? I can hear you now. Okay. If it gets weird, you got another spot you can go? Are you on your phone or a computer? A computer. But I can't go to my phone if it gets really bad. Okay. Okay. We're we're yeah. we're we're easy here. Are you at your 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 gym? Yeah, I'm at the gym. I'm in between working. Yeah, uh, you're training. a coach. You're a coach there. Yep, yeah, coach, and I do admin at the gym. I do a lot. <laughs> and what's the name of the gym? It's called CrossFit Soul Rebel. CrossFit in Fort? Greensboro. CrossFit, CrossFit Fort Soul Rebel. Oh, Soul Rebel, Soul Rebel, Soul Rebel. Got it. Yeah. You can tell I've done my research. Yep. <laughs> in Melbourne. Uh, Hey, how old are you? I'm 23. And uh, do you have games aspirations? Um, I would probably say no. No. In, in, <laughs> not necessarily. Yeah, not games aspirations. I definitely have like semifinals aspirations, but. And, and why not games aspirations? You, 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 It would just be too much to bite, like to th even think in your brain. You're like, okay, one step at a time. I'll get to semifinals. And then from there, I'll deal with that. Yeah, definitely. Like, yeah, I don't know. I feel like games is definitely out of my reach. Like semifinals at the moment is what I'm like, is my big goal. And then, yeah, I guess if I reach that, then you sort of look what's next. But at the moment, I'm just like all for semifinals. Uh, how, how did you do in the um, Open? What did you end up finishing? Um, Pretty good. I think worldwide, I was like 110th maybe. Yeah, so in Oceania, I was 13th, which I was stoked about. Yeah, that's insane. Isn't that yeah. crazy? You could be 110th in the open, 13th in mm. your region on your continent, which is a, uh, uh, you know, rabid fans and participants of CrossFit. And yet that's still, you still have to temper your aspirations to go to the games. Oh, yeah. No, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. The Torium Pro still seems like pretty out of reach for me. I think this year, like, yeah, we're going to have to go pretty hard this weekend at quarterfinals. But, yeah, I don't know. It's been good so far. And I've been – my training's been good. But, yeah. How close did you get last year, Haley, to the semifinals? Oh, not super close. I think in the quarterfinals I was like around 60th in um, Oceana. Mm -hmm. So you have to be in the top 30. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so you so, can, so you can see it. Yeah. And I think this year, like get, doing uh, pretty well in the open, like, yeah, I can definitely see it. And I've improved heaps from last year. Like, yeah, last year I was like pretty trash at a lot of things. <laughs> you're, you're, you're born, you're born and raised in Australia, obviously. Yep. Born and raised in um, like Melbourne, Australia. Well, like I, I was raised in like regional Victoria. So in the country. And are you are you still in that area? Is is um No, so I live now in Melbourne, like in the actual city. Um, which is fun. Go down to like my hometown Warrigal every now and again and it's like, yeah, more country like. But now I'm like in the city and it's good. I much prefer being up here. Are you still a kid? Like um like you're not married. Do you have are you married or have kids or anything like that? No. No, oh no, definitely not. <laughs> I'm so just you're me, still myself, a kid. and I you're still a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I act like a kid. <laughs> all right. Good. And there's plenty of time. There's plenty of time for all that stuff. That's good. I'm glad to hear you're a kid still. And um, tell, tell me about uh, growing up in Australia. What did you do? They, everyone tells me you guys are just born in the water. Like, hey, they're born and then start swimming. Uh, yeah, I definitely like swam a lot as a kid. But I don't know. I grew up skiing. So I feel like I'm a bit of an anomaly. Um, more that like I was a skier. So I spent every weekend like in winter at the snow um which compared to america like we had to actually like i drove every friday night my parents would like drive me oh there we go look at that there you are <laughs> um every friday night my parents would like drive me and my siblings up to like falls creek and then we'd we'd race i did cross country skiing so we'd race like saturday and sunday drive back 6 hours on the sunday night go to school monday we did that like every weekend of winter 
Um, How old were you when you started that? Uh, well, I started like cross country skiing when I was just like a little tiny kid and probably started racing, like getting into it more when I was like 12, 13. I just did that all throughout like high school. I actually ended up going to the US and I lived in Vermont for about a year to ski. Hey, um, I, I, we, in the United States, we think of cross country uh, skiing as like speed walking. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. It's a bit, yeah, it is. And it's like that. I don't really cross country ski much anymore because it is a little bit like, dude, eh, you're it's, it's yeah. hard work. Hey, is there any, is there any downhill skiing in um, Australia? Yeah. So that photo, I'm actually downhill skiing. That's in Mount Buller. So these days I only downhill ski. It's all pretty trash though, like compared to the um, Northern Hemisphere, like the skiing is not <laughs> that good you have to like drive to the top of a mountain and like these days with global warming the snow is scarce hey th that's crazy that um uh when, yeah. what what kind of parents do you have that get you into cross-country skiing like th that is a that is a uh, that, and how did you even like it that shit's hard right it's basically like marathon yeah. running isn't it oh yeah it's hard and they do like ski marathons like my dad he loves skiing like that's the sort of my dad is just like he froths it and he still skis like he he was just in Japan for like a few weeks in February and he just loves skiing and he just got us into it like they just love taking us to the snow um and yeah I don't know I don't know why they preferred I think cross country skiing is a fair bit cheaper than downhill skiing so that's probably one reason why we did it more than downhill but um yeah I don't know it, it was good fun I didn't mind it I liked all my friends and that I had with it Oh, uh, so, so, uh, Christine Young, is that static in my AirPods or on, uh, it's the line. Hey, will you log, do you, is it easy for you to log out and log back in? Uh, no, yeah, that's easy. You want me to do it on my phone? Or, or could you just take your head, try taking your headphones off and using your speaker on your computer. You could go to your settings on the bottom yeah, there. Yeah. And settings. then, and then and go then, to audio. And then go to audio. So default Mac, the MacBook Air yep. microphone. Yeah. Okay. Let's try that. Oh, perfect. Static. Is that better? better? So much better. Very good. I can never trust the AirPods. <laughs> yeah, it's for some people they work great and some people they don't. I don't know. I don't know what's up with that either. Yeah, um yeah. cross country skiing is so, I I I am trying to think if I know anyone who does it, but I when I think of skiing in the states, downhill skiing, it's something people do for recreation. And when I mm. think of uh cross country thinking uh skiing, I think of it as more um uh, fitness. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Cross country skiing is like hard work. It is not, you can do it for like recreational, but it's kind of just like going for like a hike. It's like similar vibes to that. But like the way I used to cross country ski, it was not, it was like going for runs. <laughs> hey, uh, like, that's where that's no, that's worse. No, that's good now. Yeah. Her, uh, her, yeah. Great. Okay. So, better. so that's how you built, do you think you built a tremendous amount of fitness from that? Yeah, well, definitely. My endurance is like my strong point is endurance <laughs> and that's a hundred percent from skiing. And I also like grew up cross country running, like it all goes hand in hand. Like I was just like a more a endurance athlete than I never did like anything fast. And I didn't really play like team sports or anything like that. Just all skiing. <laughs> hey, and, and what's, um, what is, uh, what kind of adaptations do you have from cross country skiing? Like what, what's it do to your body composition? Like, is it like, where do you feel it in your quads or your calves or your glutes? Like, where do you feel it? Um, I don't know. I think like by the time I finished skiing and like before I started CrossFit, like I kind of lost all my muscle anyway, but I'd say probably adaptation wise, it's mostly just your lungs. <laughs> really? Sort of, like yeah, my, 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 like my, 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 my wife, more what more abs. Yeah, probably. Yeah. You do like a lot of double polling, which is like a lot of abs, triceps, um, your quads. So cra it's crazy on your core. Yeah, it's, yeah, you have to be pretty stable. You Yeah, you use your whole body. It's like, because you use your arms, like you've got poles, so you use your arms, you use your core, like with planting your poles, like that's a lot of core. And yeah. then obviously you're using your legs as well. And, and, and this is, I'm, I'm embarrassed to ask this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. And what about your lats? Do you get any from that pool? Do you get any, uh, like, yeah, or, yeah. 100%. Like it's basically, so we, I've done like a VO2 max test on the ski erg. Like when I was ski training, we use the ski ergs as like, um, as like testing things. Like we actually did VO2 max tests on those. If you keep scrolling, these are back in the skiing days. There we go. VO2 max. That's on a treadmill. 
But yeah, that's at the AIS, so the Australian Institute of Sport in Canberra. We'd go there like for like development camps and do VO2 max tests. I don't think I was really any good then, though. I'd be much fitter now. <laughs> and and um, were you a competitive cross country skier? When I was younger, like in the Australian like ski races, I was competitive. But then as I got older, like in Australia, you kind of have to be like, um, you kind of need to like live at the snow in order to be a really good skier because then right. like for me, the only times I got to ski was on the weekends when I'd go to race because I lived six hours from the snow. So I didn't really get to train on snow. Um, so yeah, as I got older and like more kids started training more kind of the talent stuff kind of went out the window and it turned into like, you actually need to train to be good. And in the world of cross country skiing as well, Australians are not, not really up there compared and, to the rest of the world. And when's the last time you've done this, this cross country skiing? Uh, cross country skiing, probably in like 2019 or, okay. well, I did go last year with my dad just to like our local mountain. Yeah. Just All right. Fun. So, so it's in your past. And then, and then, and then yeah. you did, and then what else did you do after that as a kid? What other uh, sports did you do? I did dancing and, <laughs> um, but just for fun. And that's kind of it. I played like basketball and netball, like when I was in primary school and did, um, what else did I do? Lots of Gym running. I saw a photo of you um, doing gymnastics. Did you? I thought so. I thought I saw you in like you in a bunch of, Oh yeah. Isn't, is this, um, Oh, it's probably aerobics. Oh, is that yeah, what that is? See. You were doing jazzercise. It could be sports aerobics. Yeah, what is it? Let's see. Yeah, that's sports aerobics. I don't know if you have that in America, but it's actually like in Australia, like in high school, we had like sports aerobics and you do, it is, it's like jazzercise. You do like a dance routine and we would do push-ups and like presses and. Um, okay, so it's basic. I was going to make fun of it, but that's what we do in CrossFit. We we, exer we com <laughs> exercise, we compete and exercise. Yeah, it's actually, you had to be pretty, like, strong and fit to do it because the routines were, like, high intensity. Like, it was, like, three minutes of puffing. Yeah, so that was sports aerobics. That was really fun, actually. And, and then and you and through that, through it sounds like through the um, cross-country skiing, building your core, and through dance, you you were a pretty damn coordinated kid. Yeah, I had pretty, I've got, yeah, pretty good coordination. I never did gymnastics in that, though, which I kind of wish I did now that I do CrossFit because – feel like it'd make lots of things much easier but um yeah i got a decent coordination like i pick up things relatively well and and do you have siblings yeah i have two siblings two older siblings a brother and a sister okay and and yeah. and you would learn a lot from them also because i'm guessing you were cha you were chasing them as a child um not really they no. probably um like my sister's not they we all skied in that but like my sister, I wouldn't say she's super athletic. Sorry, Tori, if she's listening. But um, she wasn't, like, super into it as she got older. And my brother, I definitely, like, we would, like, train together. And But I, I don't know. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't say I really would chase him, though. <laughs> and, and then um, do, in high school, did you play any sports besides these? No, nah, just all skiing. I didn't have time. <laughs> and then did, yeah. you go, did you go to college after high school? Um, I, well, sort of, I've since, uh, I've done a few different degrees. So in Melbourne or in Australia, we have like university. So you don't actually like go to college. You just kind of like go to uni. It's kind of like more school. Um, you don't live there or anything. Well, you can, but most people don't. So, so I did like grade, a year. It, it just keeps yeah. going after high school. Anyone can just do it. Yeah, pretty much. So like I did a year of like nursing at uni, which I hated. So I quit. And then, I did a about a year and a half half of like health science, which again I hated. And then now I'm doing primary teaching, which I actually really like, but it's probably gonna take me like six years to finish this degree, but that's okay. And primary teaching is teaching kids? Yeah. So like, yeah, like um kids like aged five to twelve. Yeah. So before high school, or I think you guys would probably call it middle school. And so yeah. like, yeah, the younger kids. And then, um, and then when did your, uh, Haley, when did your paths cross with, uh, CrossFit? Um, in like 2019, 2020. So when I moved to Melbourne, um, so after I finished school, which I graduated in 2018, so I moved to Melbourne to go to uni because all the unis are like in Melbourne. Um, and I just joined the closest gym to my house, which was a CrossFit gym. So I had like, I didn't even know what CrossFit was, but I wanted to do like group classes because that was fun. So joined a CrossFit gym and then I just like, yeah, started doing CrossFit like 
two days a week and had no idea about anything. <laughs> hey, and, so you yeah. just went on. I want to go back a second. So you're you're in Melbourne and you're mm -hmm. at uni and um, you want why did you want to go to a gym? And then how did you find that gym? Did you just Google it? Why did you want to go to a gym? Well, because I'd always done like fitness stuff growing up and like now I wasn't dancing. I wasn't skiing. Like I literally was just like, I don't know, not doing anything. Like I was kind of getting chubby and I wanted to kind of be fit again. So mm -hmm. I, yeah, joined, I just Googled like gyms near me and it came up with like, um, I don't know, a few different ones, but this was like the only one that said I had group classes because I just didn't want to go to like, you know, a 24 hour gym where I didn't, I had no idea what I was doing. So, and you had never yeah. heard of CrossFit? Nah, I don't think this so. It's so weird. I've never heard this story before. I mean, I've heard so many stories about how people got into CrossFit. You Googled gym by near me, you yeah. saw a CrossFit gym, and then you said group classes. D did you even know what the, did you look at the pictures? Did you even know what the movements were? Did you watch any no. videos or you just walked in the first day? Yeah, I just walked in the first day and I had I had absolutely no idea. Like it's actually kind of funny. Like I had no clue. <laughs> and then I did my I actually did so about I probably joined there in maybe like March. And then I think the open in 2019 or the 2020 open was in like it was at the end of the year. And I remember doing the open, like being really nervous, like kind of being like, oh, I kind of want to do that. Cause I've always competed in things. And I did it scaled, the scaled open. And I remember it was the workout that was like um, pistols. It was like pistols, clean and jerks and something else. But the scaled version was like um, step ups and like clean and jerks. I think that was it. I don't know. But I remember them being like, Haley, squat clean the bar, like squat clean the bar when it got to a heavy bar. And I literally was like, I don't know what you mean. Like, what do you mean squat clean? The bar like i'd never heard of doing a squat clean i just knew a power clean yeah it was pretty funny and and, and now and now you and now you do you love squat cleaning the bar now uh yeah i'm much better at squat cleaning the bar these days compared to power cleaning the bar but yeah like seriously i have no idea yeah, wait you you this. you prefer squat clean to power clean yeah back before i probably came to so that was a different gym that wasn't this gym when I came out to Soul Rebel, like I started weightlifting more and I kind of wait, wait, wait. So sorry, sorry, more. sorry, sorry. Go back. I was yeah. staring at you doing the squat, uh, squat clean before, <laughs> before what, before you went so, to CrossFit, you'd squat clean before you had ever walked into a CrossFit gym. No, I hadn't. Oh, no, oh so, okay. Yeah. So before I came to this gym that I'm at now, I like only really power cleaned. I didn't know. So like, how did, where life. did you ever power clean at? So that was at my old gym, which was called Northside Fitness. And it was like, it's closed now. Um, and they, yeah, I didn't really know. Oh, but it was, just, but it was a CrossFit gym also. Yeah. Yeah. It was okay, CrossFit. Okay, this was okay. like that same CrossFit gym. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. They okay, just okay. never taught me to squat clean, you know, like I just, had, had you ever I seen... never went to the classes where they taught to squat clean. Did you ever do any training for, um, uh, like off season training or, uh, land training or any training for your other sports for cross country skiing or anything like that? Um, I did running and then we'd occasionally do strength stuff, but not really like, and, and what would that look like? Had you ever even heard of a deadlift? Um, I definitely would have heard of it, but I don't reckon I'd ever really have done one. Right. So you'd never done it. You had to look, you, you probably hadn't heard of a snatch or didn't oh, know never. what it was. Never. Definitely not. No, this is, never this heard is of crazy. a snatch muscle up. I would have had no idea. What did you wear the first day you went to the CrossFit gym? Just tennis shoes and short. Did you like, did you even know what to wear? Like, do you wear no, shorts I, and tennis I, shoes or? Yeah, I would have worn like three quarter length leggings, uh -huh. a, a, probably like a Nike singlet. And I remember I had red, red. You showed um, up on your first day of CrossFit with a singlet on? Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know. Do you call a singlet? Maybe like a tank top. Maybe that's what a oh, uh, okay. American okay. call okay. it. Okay. Okay. I don't know. Let what do you call singlet? Let me show you what a singlet is in my world. Okay. That would have been amazing <laughs> if you would have uh, shown up in a singlet. Uh, this, uh, here, here we go. Let me show you a singlet. Uh, this is a, uh, this is a singlet in my world. Right here. This guy's wearing a, oh wait. This guy's wearing a singlet. <laughs> That's like a weightlifting suit. Yeah. Did you show up in that? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. No way. <laughs> okay. So, so, so you, and, and, and were you like in running shoes, like some pretty high thick yeah. shoes? Yeah. I had, I had Salomon running shoes. I, I know exactly what shoes I would wear. And they were like cross running. country running shoes even. Yeah. Like with thick tread. They had like, yeah, they had thick tread. 
And that's what I wore. And I remember I wore the bases of them. Like they were like flat because I remembered like I was doing box jumps and like all this stuff and they just like wore out completely before I got. And tell me about your first day. Did you like it? Did they, did they put you through what's an on-ramp class or anything like that? Or no, I think I was just like in the actual class and I remember there were wall balls in it and I think I did like it. I definitely wasn't any good. And I remember getting into my car after and like I have a manual car. So like I had to put my, I remember putting my left foot like on the clutch and my quad just like cramping. <laughs> yeah. Like I remember that so vividly. Um, and, and wall balls are uh, oppressive. They're, they're pretty, it's a pretty wild movement um, always, but especially when you first start, like it's oh, a, yeah. the first couple are good. And then you're like, wait a second, there's nowhere to hide. This ball's coming down to get me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I reckon I would have done like a fair few, like, I don't think there it was like a small wall ball workout. Like that's all I remember doing on that day was wall balls. <laughs> Do you remember what, did they start you with a four pound ball or a six pound ball? Yeah. Or, oh yeah. yeah. I would have had the lightest ball. Definitely. Wild. Yeah. And, and this was uh 2018. 2019. Yeah. 2019. Yeah. And, um, and how, and how, how many days a week were you going? Oh, I remember some weeks where I wouldn't even go. So, like, I think most weeks I'd try and go, like, three days. Like, I, I don't think I would ever go two days in a row. Like, I or, I didn't think that that was allowed. <laughs> I think I'd, like, go and then rest the next day and then go. And some days, like, I wouldn't be able to get into class. Like, the class I could, wanted to go to would be, like, full. So I'd miss it. And then some other weeks I just, like, wouldn't go at all because I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> so hey, I was pretty. Did yeah, you think it was expensive? Weeks um yeah this gym that i went to was kind of, it was like only they had a student price i think it was like 50 dollars a week so definitely expensive but like i don't know i paid it happily yeah how about did you have like i think part of the reason why crossfit's been so successful is um people like me who are just like just going to the gym Mm. Just, you know what I'm mean? just going to the gym for, uh, you know, whatever, just doing the Arnold Schwarzenegger routine back buys, you know, um, you know, tries and just splitting up your days. And then all of a sudden we do CrossFit. And in two weeks, we're like, we have a, we have a body composition shift. Like we look in the mirror oh, and we're yeah. like, Whoa, what, what is going on? Did you, did you notice that right away too? Um, not right away. Like when I first started, cause obviously I didn't go that often. So I feel like, and I probably didn't eat very good. <laughs> so I feel like I didn't really get that much good of a body composition shift, but definitely like when I started training, like consistently, like every day, I definitely like, yeah, put on a bit of muscle. And, and, and where did you notice it? Where did you notice it first? Um, I don't know. Maybe my legs. I don't know. Like, I don't, like, I don't really remember. You don't remember? And, 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 no. and could you do a pull up when you went to the gym? Could you even oh, do no. one pull up? No, not even one. No. Nah. I remember doing my first pull up, my first kipping pull up in that same scaled CrossFit Open. Wow! Congratulations. The open, the yeah. open got you to do it. Yeah, and but I still couldn't do a strict one. That was like I could do a single kip, and I didn't even finish it. Just like a few months ago, I redid that workout, but like the RX version, and I like finished with minutes to spare, and it was all ring muscle ups. Whereas I didn't even finish that time doing kipping pull ups with a light wall ball. And when you're in there, and you and you're new to the class. Mm. And there's all these things, all these new words like clean and jerk and snatch and deadlift and, and split jerk. And you're like, this oh, is, yeah. there, there's a lot of new stuff. Um, did you, do you remember the first time you saw someone do a muscle up and were you like, whoa, what's that? Yeah. Oh, I feel like I don't remember, but I definitely remember watching. I don't remember my, the first time, but I remember watching people do them and being like, holy moly. Like I could never <laughs> do that. And so you did think that you, you thought that that was, that was out of reach. Oh, 100%. Definitely. And like handstand walking, I thought that that was going to be impossible. Interesting. And and then the, and then and then the, look at you today. This is just 3 weeks ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, it's crazy. I watch these videos and I'm like, I can't even believe it. And do you do you like that movement also? Ring muscle-ups? Yeah. Um, I do like them now. That's this is ring muscle-ups are probably the hardest movement I've that I've like the hardest movement for me to get like for the longest time I could not muscle up like last year 
in the open and the quarterfinals, I did all my muscle ups with a false grip, like a false grip kit, all singles, like my brain just like could not comprehend it. So I like them now and I, because I can do them and I'm getting better at them. Yeah. yeah, I definitely like the longest time I was like, I, I, my brain just didn't ring muscle up. I don't know. I think that's the way you should start them. Yeah, with the false grip. Yeah, I think you should absolutely yeah. start them like that. Just like I think people should start pull ups. They should they should be able to do it's strict, strict pull ups. Yeah, and and do you have bar muscle ups also? Uh, yeah, I could do bar muscle ups for a while, but they've only really kind of become good recently too. Like, definitely, I sort of shortcutted like my CrossFit. Like, I didn't learn. I didn't have much strict strength before I learned like my bar muscle ups. So then they were really bad for a long time. Um, and now that I've like got a fair bit stronger, they're starting to get better. But yeah, for ages, like muscle ups were just, I would, I would do them, but I would not like, if they were to come up in a workout, I would like dread the workout. Cause I was like pretty bad at them. How long, uh, you entered the CrossFit gym in 2019. How long before you get a muscle up? Oh, I probably didn't do a muscle up until like 2021. Okay. So three years. And, yeah. Or and two years. Yeah. Two, two years. Yeah. Thank you for the yeah. math. And then, um, and then how long were you there before you even thought it was possible? Like it sounds when you first saw them, you're like, well, I'll never do those. But how long before you thought, Oh, maybe I will get one of those. Probably similar amount of time. Like, yeah. Bef like until maybe until like after COVID hit, like when we, when I started, cause in COVID, like gyms were shut for ages. So I actually started training a little bit more cause I was just like at home. So I would just like train all the time. And then I was like, Oh yeah, I could probably like, I started getting stronger. So I thought maybe I could, you know, do some of the harder stuff. And I started just like practicing handstand walking. And once I learned to handstand walk, I was like, all right, maybe I can do some of the other stuff too. Mm. Cause that seemed like so out of reach. And that gave you confidence to be like, okay, anything's possible. Yeah. Pro yeah. I'd say so. Yeah. And it is, would you say it transitioned from like this, uh, uh, one time every two days or three days or missing a, a week to an mm. obsession? Like, would you say that there was a, like, you couldn't, you were in, you just couldn't stay away from the gym? A hundred percent. That and, and was, did, that definitely also happened during COVID. Oh, okay. Yeah. So basically it's like, Hey, what am I going to do with my time? Tell me about that. So COVID happens and yeah. um, your country locks down. Yeah. It was wild. It was yeah. like Melbourne was the most locked down city in the world, I think. And, um, and so they did, they do the lockdown and um, you're like, okay, I guess I'm just going to work out more. Yeah. So they, yeah, they gave like the gym, let us like borrow equipment. Um, so yeah, every day I would just like go and take all my equipment down to like the park. Cause I didn't have anywhere at my house to like do it. So I'd go to the park and then I guess I was down there. So I'd just like train for like two hours because I had nothing else to do. And I'd log lugged like all my plates out of the car and the barbell. So I had to do something with it. Like I didn't want to do just like a 10 minute workout and then put it all away. So yeah. And then I'd spend like 20 minutes practicing handstand walking and um, yeah, I'd go home and like practice doing handstand pushups on the wall at home. And yeah, that's probably when I just started training and I'd have to train every day and like would force myself on a Sunday to like not train. <laughs> yeah. When I when I heard um, the stories, this is getting off subject a little bit, but when I heard the stories about what was going on in Melbourne, it, it mm. surprises me that you were allowed to go to the park. Like I would hear stories like you couldn't be 15 minutes well, away from your things. Hang on a second. Oh, yeah, I need to disconnect this. Oh, look, someone else said it in the comments, too. This is oh, so. So back. can you hear me? Yeah. So when I would hear the story, this is going, this is just some COVID talk here. So when I heard yep. the stories about Melbourne, I would hear that, um, uh, you couldn't go, you couldn't be out for, like, except for like a half an hour at a time, or mm. you couldn't be more than 15 minutes walking distance from your house. You, you yep. just disregarded that stuff. And you're like, fuck it. I'm just going to go to the park and I'll do what I want. And I'll get in my car. And you just ignored the rules. Well, most of it were like within the rules. Like, um, our rules were like, I think it was two hours maybe of like exercise every day. And there was like a curfew, so you couldn't be outside within like, I don't know, it might have been like 6 a.m. to like 8 p.m. You couldn't be outside your house and you couldn't go within with it, uh, further than five kilometers of your house. So I would go out, like drive my car to the park, which was like, I don't know, maybe two k's from my house. And then I probably disregarded the two hour rule every now and again, because 
who, who's counting. I don't know. Um, and yeah, but I wouldn't go out like after the curfew or anything because it's dark anyway. So there was all kind of within the rules. The ones that were really dodgy were like, you couldn't go to anyone else's house. So I never really trained with anybody else because people would report people like people were pretty savage on like reporting others. Um, and when you would be working out at the park, would people come join you? Just like random strangers be like, hey, can I jump in? Nah, not really. People would say stuff, but no one would be like, hey, can I have a go? Like people were pretty, I don't know, nobody really went near each other. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, totally off subject. Do you think that they could do that to Australia again? Or do you think the people would be like a second time? They'd be like, fuck you. We ain't doing that again. I don't know. That's actually a good question. I My first, my first instinct would be like, nah, never. But then I'm like, they probably could because I know, they did crazy. it like five times. I know it's. I, I I wonder that too. I'm in a. Re, I live in a really weird part in the in our country. Um, mm. You know, where I was at, they were they were um, locked down pretty strict. I mean, not like not like Melbourne. Um, and, yeah. and no and no one would come get you. You know what I mean? Like you could tell the cops to fuck off and they would go away. But yeah, right. Um, but at the same time, we were supposedly locked down where I was at in Texas, mm -hmm. just right across the country. They were having the largest indoor boxing match in the history of the world. They had 60,000 people packed into a stadium for a Manny Pacquiao fight. And so, yeah, right. And but your country wasn't like that. Pretty much all the this, the I don't know what you call them provinces. Are they provinces? The states. Yeah. States. All, OK, so like yeah. us, all your states were kind of on the same page. Uh, for a lot of it, yes. And then as it went on, like. Melbourne stayed locked down and everyone else didn't like we had um there was actually a CrossFit comp I think that was it the Torium Pro yeah it must have been the Torium Pro like in 2021 that Brisbane like wasn't like they ran it in Brisbane and lots of Victorians actually went up there and there was like a cutoff that Victoria went back into so that's Victoria's like the state I live in Okay. Um, so like Melbourne went back into lockdown at like 8 p.m. on a Friday night. So anyone who flew in after 8 p.m. On, on a Friday night to Brisbane or whatever, they weren't allowed to compete. They had to like isolate in their hotel because Melbourne was in lockdown, but even though Brisbane still ran the competition. So it was, a little <laughs> bit like that. It was so dumb. Like heaps of people literally flew up there and yeah. then had to just like isolate in their hotel and like their teams couldn't compete in the competition because they one of their members flew up on a different flight. It was ridiculous. God, it is ridiculous. Yeah. I, I think they can run. I don't think that they could do it again. God, I, in, in my lifetime. But I think that for as far as the playbook goes, they could control society like that again, like in another if they waited another 30 or 40 years. They just need a new batch of people to oh yeah. To scare. Did you did you yeah. get sick at all from COVID? Uh, no, I did have it once, but I wasn't sick. I did have to like, you know, isolate at home because you had to, you had to like stay at home for seven days or you'd get like fined. Right. So I did have to like stay at home, but I wasn't sick. I just trained all week again. <laughs> right. Right. It's yeah. interesting too, because I remember them saying 80% of the people were asymptomatic. So for all we know, we all had it 20 times. Yeah. Oh, I've definitely had it like multiple times since then. Like I haven't tested positive again, like, cause I, like, I don't know, haven't tested that much, but right. I Smart. Will, Good. will guarantee you that I've had it <laughs> again. Um, so, so you, so through the lockdowns, your fitness improves tremendously. You don't waste the time. You're not sitting at home watching, uh, shitty movies. You're like, you're getting at it. Yeah. I trained heaps. So I think my, um, overall fitness probably improved a little bit and like, not so much my lifting, um, cause I didn't really know what I was doing and I didn't have like, I couldn't squat or anything cause I didn't have squat racks. Um, I would just kind of do like, you know, power cleans and power snatches in like workouts and stuff. But yeah, my fitness, my running probably improved a little bit. Definitely the handstand walking. But yeah, I didn't like work on any pull ups or muscle ups or anything because I didn't have access to it. And and then and then when when the lockdowns lifted, was your gym still around or did they go out of business? Um, so the gym I was at was still around for about. It was open. So in Melbourne, we had like two or I don't know how many, but we had like two bigger lockdowns and there was like a few months in between. So my gym, I probably had about, I don't know, three or four months of like training in that gym. And then we went into like a really, another really big lockdown. And then the gym shut down after that one. It could Because of economic issues. Yeah. They, yeah. Went out of business. Like, 
How yeah, sad. They had to, it was just really, it was hard for a lot of businesses. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And, then, and, then, and then, so they do that. And then when that happens, are, are you bummed? Do you, are you sad? Do you mourn that loss of that gym? Um, yeah, I was super sad. Like that was my whole like life pretty much like all the, because since coming to Melbourne, like I didn't really, I dropped out of my uni degree since then. So I didn't have like my uni friends anymore. So they were all my like people at that gym. And then, um, and that was where I worked as well. Like in COVID, I did my personal training course. So I worked there. So when they shut down, I didn't like have a job anymore and I didn't have a place to train. So I was pretty upset. Like it was, that was a rough, a rough time. And then they lift the lockdowns and you find another gym. Um, yeah. So straight away, I was super lucky. I like reached out to a bunch of gyms, like reached out to Soul Rebel and Ben, the owner, he um, was like awesome. I don't know. I think it was just luck. He literally was like, yeah, sure. Like I don't really need a coach, but you can come out and like train with us, like come meet us. And so I did and um, started working here and training here. And that was, yeah, really good. When was the first time you heard Haley Adams' name, the Haley Adams who's been to the games a bunch? Yeah, well, it was actually in that same scaled open that I did. Oh. I remember going home, like nobody mentioned anything to me at the gym about like what the open was or, you know, I knew nothing about the CrossFit Games. And I remember going home and like looking it up because I was like, I want to do competition. Like I want to see what this is. And I looked it up and then I saw that there was someone called Haley Adams And I remember going back into the gym and being like, yo, did you guys know, like, there's a CrossFit Games athlete with the same name (laughs) as me? And they're like, yeah, we knew that. I'm like, what the heck? Why didn't you tell me? Uh, Not just A, I mean, mean, crazy popular, crazy successful one, right? Yeah. And she's also like the exact same age as me, pretty much. Yeah, what a trip. Okay. And then, um, so, so you're back at that gym. What did you say you do at that gym? You coach and what else do you do? Uh, like admin. So I do a lot of, I do like social media and member management. I do like new, new members and, um, yeah, social media, stuff like that. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, CrossFit, um, CrossFit Soul Rebel Greens Bar. Soul Rebel. I bet you it should pop up. And, and so you must, I, I hear it's really, and how long have you been working there? Um, about two and a half years. I heard it's really hard to find good employees for a CrossFit gym. Yeah, you reckon? And what what do you think? Is that true? Um, maybe. I don't know. We've had the same at this gym. We've had the same four coaches like the whole time I've been here. It's been the same four coaches. We haven't had any new any anyone leave like. So I think maybe it is, but we just like I guess Ben's found his people and has kept them. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, uh, Haley. Uh, you're are you st- are you sorry i know you said where you at are you you're, are you still in melbourne yes yeah okay so and what victoria. and what state is that victoria victoria okay sorry yeah. i know you said all that yeah well there you go uh julia uh she's in i think julia is a marine and i think she's oh, yeah. deployed i think she's stationed in australia oh really what state are you in julia yeah i think i i think so i think that's what I remember. And so, and are, are of those four, are you the most recent addition to the group? Yeah. Yeah. So of the four, we have Ben, he's the, like, he found this, this gym's been around for like 13 years. And wow. then Andy is like a co-owner. So he hasn't owned it for the whole 13 years. He came probably like halfway. And then we have Katie, who's been here maybe like five or six years. Like she's been here a while. And then me. So you found your people. Pretty much. Yeah. I'm pretty lucky. Yeah. Congratulations. That's an epic story. Th- that's a nut. So th- that's two stories of yours. I don't hear people just Googling gym and going in and not even knowing what it is. And then really, I just feel like I hear more. Um, um, oh, she's in Melbourne. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So, so okay. So Julia is in uh, Melbourne. Yeah, right. What does this mean? Darwin. Is that the name of a town there? Oh, Darwin. No, no. So she's in Darwin. So that's like north. That's like northern territory. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's not, she's so not it's, really so she's not near you. Okay. No. Yeah. It's probably some shithole in the desert where they send the Marines. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm, I've never been to Darwin. All I know is that it's really hot. It's like at the. Yeah. You've never been there. You know why you've never been there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Um, uh, so, um, it's it's kind of crazy because you hear 
you you hear the opposite stories. You hear just yeah. like stories of like trainers who come in and trainers that leave and people who don't want to work hard and people who don't get along and and mm. and you've really found a spot that's like um home for you. Is it a big gym? Uh no, it's not super big. We don't have a, like a whole heap of members. We probably have like less than 150 members. Um Oh, that's and, good. Yeah, and it's like it's a relatively like I don't know, I'd say it's like a moderate size space. Um but yeah, the, it's actually funny, like you say that you don't like hear of many people not knowing about CrossFit when they first start, but like majority of our members here, I would say don't know much about CrossFit at all. Like when I, when I mentioned that you followed me on in Instagram, everyone was like, huh? Like they oh, had no idea what that, yeah. like who you were, what that meant, anything yeah. about the CrossFit. When the Open's coming up, they're like, so what's the Open? And like, wow. we have to explain it like every second day. Yeah. Hey, you know what's cool about that story? I was I was I forget who I was chatting about this the other day, but I like hearing these stories too because it shows how much potential there is for growth, not like as in terms of growth of like bringing people in, but making mm. the people who are in more aware. Like yeah. Like tr truthfully, I would I would think that probably less than 1% of the people who actually do CrossFit know have ever heard of me or this podcast or even give a shit, right? They just go yeah. there, they work out, they get fit, they like it and they go home. Yeah. But that makes me that makes me stoked because that that means there's just a massive opportunity for for growth. Yeah. Well, this year in the open like we had Heaps of people not have any idea what what it was. But I actually really liked the Open this year. And I think the the fact it was, like, super simple made, like, a ton of our members sort of maybe even have the same experience as me where they went home, like, they saw the workout. So then they went home and looked it up and actually registered to do it and found out more about, like, the CrossFit Open and actually, like, CrossFit and the CrossFit Games, stuff like that. Yeah, good good point. Um, how, many yeah. how many people did you have do the Open at your gym? Do you know? uh close to 50 we had 15 people yeah close to 50 so we had 15 people qualify for quarterfinals which is pretty cool yeah um but yeah i think between between 40 and 50 people i don't know maybe 50 is a reach wait uh how, wait how many did you say qualified for quarterfinals 15 in, so that's including yeah. masters yeah wow congratulations yeah. that's wild are, are yeah. you the fittest girl in your gym uh yeah yeah. And are there, are there girls that see you as a, uh, like, are there girls who want to be competitive with you? Like, are you inspiring girls around you? I don't know. <laughs> um, maybe I, I wouldn't really say so. Like, I think we do have a few girls who, um, like a sort of training a little bit harder, but they probably don't want to be like me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> hey, as, as this obsession uh, grows, and has yeah. grown to this. How have your uh, how has your family and friends how have they responded? Um, <laughs> well, my family don't really know much about CrossFit, um, and I think every time I see them, so like my dad, he's a physio, and every time I see him, he's like, uh, like, why do you do this? <laughs> and my sister, same thing. Like I've have like had issues with nerve pain and stuff like that and she'll be like have you ever thought about just like taking a rest like have a rest have a few weeks off maybe that'll help so they're not really like too into it and I don't think they really understand like how much time and energy and effort I actually put into it like yeah I don't know if they yeah if they knew how much effort I put into it I'm sure that they would be a little bit more keen about it but at the end of the day they don't really know anything about it my brother he he's pretty supportive because he's actually like sat down with me because i used to live with him and we've like watched the crossfit games together so he thinks it's pretty cool uh um you, you, you said last year you took 60th yeah. and they took 30. how many are they taking this year 40. 40 so 10 more yes and so good. yeah and so that your chances and how much more fit are you this year than you were last year? A lot. <laughs> well, can you give me an example? Like, like what was um, your, like, is your, is your clean gone up significantly? Your max pull ups, your. Oh, definitely. So my lifts are, <clears throat> are like probably similar. Um, Cause I haven't really had a very good, I haven't had great luck with like my body when it comes to um, injuries and being able to actually follow a lifting program. So my lifts are very similar, but my gymnastics 
is like now I can do, you know, sets of muscle ups like that video we watched. Whereas last year, like I couldn't do more than one in a row. Um, my handstand push ups have become heaps better. My um, handstand walking, like everything, all my skills are like way better. Um, and then my fitness as well. Like I'm just quicker transitions. Like I don't die as much. <laughs> if you qualify for semis, will you go? Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. I train with, um, I train with, so I train at another gym as well. Like one day a week it's called Wolf Den CrossFit and that's on like the peninsula. Um, shout out to them. They're awesome. They love you by the way. Oh, good. Tell them <laughs> I said hi. Yeah, I will. Um, and they have a really good athlete there, Daisy McDonald. I sent her, I sent you her profile. So she's a Torian athlete from last year and I've been training you, with you her. You sent me her, you sent me her profile? Yeah. She wanted to be on. <laughs> Did, um, did you? No, 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 no. You, you're, you. This is my charity work with you, Haley. That's it. She, tell <laughs> her she has to tell her she has to change her name to uh, Tia Toomey. Okay, I will. I will. There you go, Daisy. Change your name to Tia Toomey. Um. Uh. Let, I'm gonna go to. Um. I was really excited when there was another Haley Adams. I have to tell you, I don't even know how I came across you. Did you? I. I, I found you right. Yeah, it was so random. So I was actually at Wolf Den. And I, cause to be honest, like I'd listened to maybe a few of your podcasts, but I didn't like follow you on Instagram or anything. Like I didn't, I didn't know that much. And I, Oh, I see phone. her. I see her. I see her. Okay. Okay. Now I see yeah. her. Sorry. Go, ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. So I opened my phone at Wolf Den and they like, they love you. Like Rico, the owner, he listens, he's listened to every single one of your podcasts. Like, 100%. Oh, good. Good. like he loves it. They all love you. And I opened my phone and I had like four followers, which you know, I don't really just get four random followers at the same time. So I looked at it and I was like, whoa, guys, is this like the real Siobhan? And Daisy grabbed my phone. And she's like, yes, what? Haley, follow back. Like, what, what the heck? And then um, we were trying to figure out why you'd followed me, like how you'd found me. And then we saw on your story, you would reshared one of my reels. I wonder how I came across you. I can't remember the story of how you popped on my radar. I don't know. Did we talk but about you on it? Did we talk about you on a show? I don't think so. The only time I've ever like interacted with anyone of importance is one of my friends. She commented on one of Haley Adams's Instagram posts uh -huh. and commented like as a joke. She's like, "You look good here," and tagged me like oh. a joke. Oh yeah, and yeah, yeah. Haley Adams replied back to it and was like, "Oh, hey, cool name." And that's like <laughs> the only time I've ever like interacted with anyone of any importance. <laughs> God, so I wish I could remember. Maybe someone, um, maybe someone knows from the show. So uh, maybe someone will say, uh, "Oh, I think." Oh, here we go. Wad Zombie. He's always good for this. I think her name popped up when Hiller was talking about the documentary. Oh, maybe that was it. Yeah, right. It was all around that time, like when Hiller put out that Haley Adams documentary. And then, and then I was so excited when you sent me that video. I have to tell you, I was pretty excited. Were you? Yeah, because <laughs> I thought it was pretty. I thought it was pretty funny. I thought it was pretty fun. Like I, um, I don't, um, my Instagram. Like I don't even know if I follow my mom or my sister or my wife. Like I don't know who I follow, but I just randomly just follow people of interest. And I'm like, oh, I'm definitely following this girl. Another yeah, Adams. Like and I always think it's weird when people have the same names, but also just inside of our small community is Haley Adams, a popular name. I don't have you ever met I another Haley Adams so. besides the Haley nah. Adams? No, I don't know that many Haley's to be honest. Like, I feel like Adams might be like a common last name, but when I saw that she had the same name as me, I was like, that's really weird. And, and so, and so, um, so you send me that text and you're like, Hey, if I beat her in the open, can I come on the show? I would have had yeah. you on the show anyway. I was pretty excited to meet you, but, oh, um, so what, how did you beat her? Like she did, she's so fucking good. How did you beat her? She just, does, the, those athletes just aren't giving it their all or. I don't know. Like I had a pretty good open. Like they were the first two workouts were good workouts for me. Like, <laughs> yeah, I guess what'd you say? 110th in the world. I guess that's pretty crazy. Yeah. So like the first, I think I beat her in the first, I, I, oh, I think I beat her in the first one, definitely. Um, but I remember I was listening to her on your podcast and she was saying that she was like, you know, she, that wasn't her best, which fair enough. But um, I beat her in the first one. And then I think she might have beaten me in the second one, but only by like three reps. Um, and But I had enough of a lead on her in the first one. And then she definitely beat me in the last one, but not by that much, like maybe a minute. And like, I guess that I just... Yeah, stayed ahead of it. 
Hey, and did you see my arch nemesis uh, uh, commented on the? Uh... Oh, Danielle Grandin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we saw my brother messaged me. He's like, he sent me a screenshot of her thing because he doesn't know who Danielle Brandon is. He's like, Haley, this person commented and she's got heaps of followers. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's so sassy. What did she yeah. say? Oh, here's the video where you say, hey, oh, it, you say, hey, Savon, if I beat Haley, can, um, can I come on the uh, podcast? And, yeah. and she writes, you can have the open Haley will take the games. <laughs> I know we saw that and we're like, well, obviously, like whatever. <laughs> How sassy, Danielle. How sassy. Yeah. Like yeah. it's yeah, I don't know. That's funny. This was this was so funny though. So they're all the Wolf Den people that like they they will be like loving this. Oh, so are these the um is, is the owner in here? Is that the owner yeah, back so there? Rico with the towel around his neck, that's Rico. So he owns Wolf Den. And okay. Nat, the girl in the front right here, yeah. <laughs> that's Nat. So they own Wolf Den. Okay. And then the other people are just like me like med uh, members. So that's Adam, which is Daisy's boyfriend. And then Daisy's the one who turns the camera around to her. Oh, so this, and Ben's not in this? Uh, no. So Ben, yeah, Ben's at Soul Rebel. So he's back in Greensboro. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So this is like, I don't, I don't work at this gym or anything. These people were just really nice and let me come and train at their gym for free for like one day a week. Okay. Okay. I, yeah. I'm, I'm slowly piecing this together. Yeah. Anyway, I, I thought that was pretty funny. I was pretty excited. I can't get Danielle's attention for the life of me. We've been fighting a little bit for the last yeah, couple right. months, but I was so happy that I was able to, uh, uh, get her get to her comment, to comment even though if it meant her uh being sassy to you that was yeah, fantastic. It's funny as <laughs> um so so if you if you qualify for the semifinals yeah you will go yeah you you hinted that you might that you have some um maybe some uh some injuries what, what type of uh, hindrances well, do you have just like niggles but well, the main the thing i was talking about is i've had like a i had like a hip issue like last year and um that's led to some gnarly um nerve pain that I still get for some reason like I can't sit in chairs like right now I'm sitting on my like pillows that saved my life <laughs> um do you have yeah. it when you stand up and walk around too is it like sciatica it's like going down no well, it's like sciatica pain but I only have it when sitting so like sitting in the car sitting when I'm working like I've got a standing desk over there because I just like, and some days it's worse than others. I think it's definitely like related to like my um, piriformis. So like when I've been doing heap of squats and whatever, like it's worse, but it doesn't really affect my training anymore. Um, it's just when I'm sitting, which I can deal with. <laughs> uh, how about when you sleep? Uh, some days I get bad pain when I'm sleeping, but I take magnesium and that like sorts me out. Oh, <laughs> if no I forget to take my magnesium, it wakes me up. And what's the... Um... What's the mechanism? Why magnesium? What's that do? Um, I think it's a muscle relaxer. So it probably my guess is that like it is like my piriformis muscle, like when it's really tight, like just pinches in certain positions, pinches on my nerves. So like what's the magnesium the piriformis just helps muscle. That's like what's your piriformis like your muscle? <laughs> really? Yeah, piriformis muscle. It's like in your side of your butt. It like I don't know how to describe it. Do you have it's two like of them? So you have two of them? You you're you have one in either butt cheek, yeah. One on either side. Yep. Piriformis muscle. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And so, and, and ma so magnesium um, somehow relaxes the muscle. Yeah. I would say, I think that that's probably magnesium. Do you take magnesium? No. Oh, really? So, magnesium, it's like a muscle relaxer. So, it also helps you sleep because, like, so you're meant to take it before bed because it's meant to, like, relax your muscles. Like, it helps with mind, like, chillaxingness. I don't know the actual terms or anything, but, like, it's a muscle relaxer. So, it helps you sleep and, it's just like salt, really, but yeah. When I think of um, in, in I don't I don't fucking know what I'm talking about. But when I think of magnesium and potassium mm. and sodium, I, I I mean the only time I would ever take those is if I was like doing a prolonged fast. Oh really? Yeah, and yeah. I've just just I've just have been told that it helps my brain just like stay, you know, firing properly. That somehow the whatever the electricity is that runs around in our body that keeps us animated it it, mm. it, it helps so yeah i mean that that's the only time i've taken that stuff i think it probably does i don't know the magnesium i take z mag so it's like atp science um they've got like a zinc magnesium oh yeah and zinc yeah a little bit of zinc yeah, yeah. um magnesium before bed leads to wild dreams and a, get, a great deuce and there you go i don't know maybe 
I don't have many dreams, but potentially. <laughs> Got good digestion. Yeah, a good a good dude. Uh, magne- magnesium is magnesium daily is goat. Mm-hmm. Good. Wow. I would definitely take magnesium. You should get on it. Uh, the Trump cocktail: a uh, magnesium, zinc, and vitamin D. Yeah. There you go. Oh, this is a great question uh, uh, from Wad Zombie. Uh, has she ever gotten any accidental communications from people looking for the other Haley Adams? Um. <clears throat> well, we thought you following me might have been that. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, but the only one is, I think, which could have been the one that maybe got you, me on your radar anyway, because someone with that documentary wrote like a comment on some, oh, it been, like, that is it. Up post. And they tagged the wrong Haley. Yeah. They tagged me. Yeah. That maybe was it. And I yeah. was that on the CrossFit games, Instagram. And I think someone said CrossFit games tagged the wrong Haley Adams. Um, potentially. Yeah, okay. I don't know. Oh, okay. It that was definitely familiar. CrossFit, like, Instagram-related. And actually, recently, this one got deleted, though, because I don't know why they – what happened. But there was one – I didn't even see it because it was posted too late at night. I was already in bed. But, like, people – other people saw it, and then the next day it was deleted. But, like, the morning chalk up put up, like, a best Oh, maybe camp. that was it. No, this was after. This was, after, like, okay. really recent. This was after the Open. They put up, like, the best camps for Open performance, and they had – Mayhem, they had 110th Haley Adams. Um, or no, they had 123rd maybe Haley Adams, but it was spelt my way. But it was the other Haley Adams's place, and she's not with, or I don't know if she's with Mayhem, but like, no, I, she's not. Nope. Yeah. So I think they deleted it because they just got that. So like, people were like, "Oh, is this you?" And I was like, "Well, no, I actually came 110th." But a uh, 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 p- piriformis is one of the deep glute muscles that when tight yeah. can compress the sciatic nerve. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. The type of magnesium people take makes a huge difference. Does it? What are the different types? I don't even know. Uh, p- piriformis syndrome is inflation of the muscle clamping down on the nerve. Mm. I think I have a little bit of that. <laughs> uh, w- but- what about, um, can you have someone rub it out? Um, yeah, I've been getting like treatment just take your like thumb and just push really yeah, hard on the probably. I mean, I get I get treatment like every week and it definitely helps. But is it painful yeah, the know, treatment? Is it someone things. basically just rubbing it really, really hard, rubbing your butt really hard? No. <laughs> no, oh. I get needles. I like dry needling. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> my work. <laughs> um, I had this bicep issue here. And Andrew, yeah. Hill, Andrew Hiller came to my house and took a butter knife. Oh, yeah, that'd be and good. Just, and just rubbed it, like, really yeah, hard with oil. It was painful. Yeah, yeah, it was painful, but, but like, within 30 minutes, it was better. I mean, it came back. Yeah, I bet. But it was better. Yeah, I bet. You need a butter knife on your butt. Yeah, maybe I'll try that. I'll bring my butter knife from home and be like, someone do this on my butt. <laughs> if if you make it to do – you, do you have a plan um, for do – do, do you do your own programming? No, I follow Mayhem. Oh, you do follow Mayhem? Yeah. And yeah. why do you follow them? Um, I've tried a couple different programs, like, in the past. Um, like, between jumping between, like, doing just the gym programming, um, mixed with, like, Ben programming just extra workouts for me. I've also done, like, Proven for a little bit, which I didn't mind. Um, but just after Down Under qualifies last year, which is like, an, I don't know if you know, Down Under Champs is like another CrossFit comp in Australia, um, which I didn't qualify for that because um, I was like pretty injured then. But, um, well, and I also wasn't that fit. But after that, Ben decided to just have me try out Mayhem. And, yeah, since doing it, it's been really good. And I can actually do the workouts. I found with Proven, I don't know if this was like if the workouts are harder or if I was just not – like if I was just not very good, but I was just like getting, like I couldn't, a lot of them I couldn't do. Like they were really hard. Um, so yeah, just started doing mayhem and the people at Wolf Den, they do mayhem too. So it makes it really easy for me to sort of bounce around and train with different people, which I think has made me a better athlete as well. And is lots there- of people put their scores up too, which is cool. Like on the, the leaderboard, there's like Royce oh. and Christy Hollard and, um, Emily DeRoy, she follows Mayhem. So there's lots of different people on there that you can like see their scores too. Yeah, and so you know where you're at with the group. Yeah. With the, uh, and um, the the is, do does Mayhem have different tracks? And which track do you do? Do they have different programs? 
Yeah, they have heaps. I just follow the semifinal games ones. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Now we're getting to it. Yeah. If you make it to so so we went from handstand. We went from I'm never gonna be able to do muscle ups and handstand and handstand walk to I could yeah. handstand walk. So shit, might as well learn muscle ups. Yeah. If you make it to um, semifinals this year, will there be a shift? You think in your psyche? Uh, what do you mean? Side just either. in terms of uh, your 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 aspirations will there be a shift in your profile like will you that be like okay i i, I like it's kind of like if you see something on a top shelf and you're like yeah. i never grab that and then all of a sudden you grow two inches and you're like oh shit if i get on my tippy toes i can grab that um i don't know i honestly if i i think for this year like Touring pro, like my goal at the moment is like qualifying for the touring pro. And I don't even I mean this year. I just mean in the future. Like, can you oh. see yourself? Like, let's say you do qualify for touring this year. Yeah. Can you see yourself readjusting? Depends on how well I do at touring. Okay. Okay. Because <laughs> if I was to like, I think this year, like, even if I was to qualify, well, yeah, I don't know. I'd Maybe I shouldn't talk badly about myself, but like, I don't know how well I would go. Like, I need to get a lot stronger, I think, to be like actually up there. Um, just like strength wise, I'm not like weak or anything, but I just, my Olympic lifts are like not as good as some other girls. So yeah, I think like, I, I don't know, maybe give me another year and then maybe. Just, but, but you don't rule it out. You could see it happening, qualify for the yeah. semifinals and it could change your, your perspective on things. Potentially. Yeah. Well, and I always, yeah, I think in the back of my mind, I don't like looking too far ahead, but in the back of my mind, I'm like. I've still got plenty more years in me. Like there's no reason why this would be, I'd qualify for Torian and then be like, Oh, well, see you later. I don't need to do anything anymore. Like I plan to keep training after that and like try and, you know, do semifinals again next, well, given yeah, hopefully I qualify this year, but um, like try and qualify again next year. And then maybe I'll be even fitter. Like the, the amount of progression I've seen from last year to, to this year, I'm like, if I can do that again, like then maybe. Was this year special? In terms of your um, in terms of your leap? Yeah, I would say so. And I, I think that a lot of it I've been training very differently this year compared to like I've been training way more than I was. And I've been my body's been way healthier, even though I'm training like double the amount. And I don't know, I kind of put it down to like the people that I've been around and um yeah, I don't know, my mental game, I guess. <laughs> um uh Bernie Gannon, uh magnesium Glyce, gl glycinate is most recommended for energy. Malate is also good, as Tyler said. L threonate, th threonate, threonate, often called magtine, is one of the purported brain benefits. Yeah, I think the one in the Z mag might be the malate. Yeah, I don't know. Um, when, when you say your your training has changed, can you describe how it's changed? Like, are you training twice a day? Yeah. Yeah. I train twice a day, um, four days a week. And then, um, and on those days I train pretty hard. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I've been training like the, ever since train going down and training with Daisy, like at Wolf Den, like she works super hard. So ever since that, I've also been doing a lot of, um, accessories and a lot of bodybuilding and, just like stuff to keep my body healthy, which I think has made a massive difference as well. Like before I would never even think like I'd get injured and then I go to the physio, they'd tell me a few things to do. I probably wouldn't do them. I'd stay injured. It'd get better. I'd get injured again. Whereas now I do like accessories and I don't know, it takes up a lot of time. I probably train like five hours a day. <laughs> and, and tell me what are accessories? Um, Like all the little things. So like hollow do, rock or rolling out um, or oh, heaps of stuff. Like I do um, for my ankles, I do calf raises. I do tib raises. I do like trap. Free what's, tib, raise. What, what's tib raises? It's the opposite of a cast phrase. You pull yeah. it towards yourself. Okay. That way. Okay. Okay. And, and, yeah. and you just, you just, you're just, you're standing there and you just do them with no weight. You just do them just sets. Of um, them. Yep. Do so you, you lean on the wall and I probably do like, three sets of 25 to 30. Like you basically go that till it burns. Then you do a few more. Wow. And, uh, the, and all that shit takes crazy patience. Yeah. Yeah. But I just like, I, I don't know. I just do it all. <laughs> okay. Okay. Keep going. Uh, so calf raises, tib raises. Yeah. I do calf raises, tib raises. I do like dumbbell external rotations. I do. Show me that. Stuff. Show me that. So like you just hold like two pound dumbbells like this and just go like this. 
I do it on my leg. So I do it single arm and I'll go like that. And, and, and how heavy is the dumbbell? Pretty light. Like I don't really go heavier than like four kilos. <laughs> oh, that's, that's not light. Oh, really? I don't know. That, that's 10, 10 pounds, right? Or no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Two okay. Not yeah. super light then. Yeah. Yeah. Like crazy. Four kilos. Crazy. Cause someone um, can literally- I mean, because you could get therapy doing that just with no weight. Yeah, yeah. So you definitely build it up. Like I've been doing like lots of these. I do like trap three raises like with one kilo dumbbells. What's that? What's trap three raises? <laughs> so that's like this, like up. Like if you're – I do it like oh. leaning. I feel like I'm at my online physio. I'm like leaning on the bench and like raising my arm up. It like gets your um, lower traps. Oh, and you're leaning so it, it – oh, so you can get more of a pinch back there. Yeah, so you could do it on like an incline bench and you could do both arms at the same time. God, I can't believe how buff my back is. When I do that, I just feel so much fucking muscle back there. Yes, it's too bad my, <laughs> too bad my It's too bad my back is in my stomach. <laughs> my goodness. Okay, so you do those. I like that. Tell me more. Tell me more. Um, I do. I got to get my, I got to show you my book. I've got, I'll show you my, um, oh, here we go. It's right here. My book is just all accessories these days. Oh, that's your journal. Yeah, this is all my training to do for the days. So I do like you do, and every uh, day you write down what you what you what you what you what you did, what you done, what you what you're doing. Well, I write it down before, so it's more like I just don't like going on my phone as much when I train. So smart. I like God, you're smart. You're a good dude. Yeah. So the night before, I write it all down in my book. So like this is today. Okay. I'll tell everyone my secret. Hey, that's that's the best thing. That's the best thing that's been said on any podcast probably in a month anywhere in the world. What? J- write the shit down. Don't do it on your phone. Because nah, your phone is it. just a fucking or or because your phone's just all this other shit's just coming in. Next thing you know, hmm. you're you're watching some dumb shit. Yeah, I'd open my phone and then I scroll on TikTok. And half the time I'm I do train by myself a lot, but like a lot of the time there's other people in the gym and I don't want to be like, you know, scrolling on my phone when I could be in my rest times. I'd I'm embarrassed if anyone ever sees me scrolling. Really? <laughs> yeah, too much pride. I, have I too definitely much do pride. scroll. I have too much pride to scroll. Yeah. 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 I go in a closet and uh, close the door. Scrolling's yeah, for when so you're I, scrolling's when you're on the for when you're on the toilet, no one can see. Yeah, or when you're in bed. Well, I try not to do that too. But. Oh, that's naughty. Point I just deducted a point from your coolness. Okay, sorry, back to your journal. Um, so yeah, I write everything down. And then it also like with the with the accessories, like I write them all in here to hold me accountable because otherwise, like they're not in the mayhem program, you know, like I need to write them down so that I actually do them. Otherwise I won't do them and then I'll get injured and yeah. Who told you about the accessories? How do you learn about them? Um, well, probably I'd probably give credit to Daisy. Yeah. So she's you're like, like doing, she's doing physio at uni. So she, I think that that's probably where she gets it from, but she's like the queen of accessories. She does so many. So let me ask you this. Do you think that do you think that it's the actual movements per se that are helping you or the attention you're giving to those body parts or do you think it's some mixture? Like I believe that if you give attention to body parts they can heal. Like just you, I I know that sounds fucking wackadoodle, but I got a little wackadoodle in me. I believe giving attention to certain body parts is really important. Like to lie down and put your attention on body parts. Um, yeah, maybe. I don't know. You never thought of that? No, I've never thought of it. Like you mean just like thinking about, like if I was to lie down and just like think about my performance muscle? No, yeah, not even think about it. You go, you go there. I go there. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, so like, I've never thought about that. Yeah. So like, I, w- when I go to bed at night, that's how I go to bed at night. Like, when, when anytime mm-hmm. anyone's like, I have trouble falling asleep. I'm like, what the fuck you mean? Why would you ever try to fall asleep? Like, when you lay oh, down yeah. in bed, that's the time that you're supposed to take your awareness out of your head and yeah. like put it on body parts and check them out and heal them. So like, yeah, okay. focus all my energy on my elbow until it kind of until it lights up. Yeah. Until I kind of like, like it. I might try that. Yeah. It's I, I call it energy body, but basically, and I, yeah. and I just take it to different spots. My wife taught it to me. Yeah, right. It's kind of like um, that's like um, mindfulness in a way. Like I've done a little bit of like mindfulness breath work stuff, and they often tell you to like do a body scan. Yeah, if you really when when you start getting good at it, like me, mm. um, you act. I actually go into this state where I can observe my whole body, and I can actually just see the. I don't know how to explain it, but I'm not even the one breathing anymore. Oh, really? 
no, I can see the whole thing fucking just happening on its own. Like you can go into yeah. your stomach, you can go into your feet, your ankles. But the weirdest thing is, is in in your heart, you can feel almost like see your heart, but you can feel yeah. your heart. But the other thing is, is also, um, you, um, uh, my elbow doesn't hurt. It's my fucking bicep. I've told you a million fucking times. It's my <laughs> bicep, you jackass. What part um, of your arm hurt? Like where is it in your bicep here? It's right here. But if, but if you can get to that state where um you it's 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 this it's this it's this wire here that like yeah, that's like, on my bicep it's like it's not even it's not even close to my fucking elbow so fucking yeah, tired yeah. of people saying it's my elbow you ever put your your thumb in there and just go like this no should I yeah that I mean I'm feeling my that's probably another similar one to the um to the knife yeah pro right just just mashing it yeah just like putting pressure in and then moving your arm. That hurts. My bicep sore too. <laughs> um, but you can actually become the observer of your breathing, and it it is it is it's a wild um experience. It's a wild. Yeah. Do you have to go? Do you have to go? Do you get? Do you no, go? that was my boss. He just texted me. He said, "Good podcast. I'm heading off to lunch now, so don't forget about class. I've got class at twelve thirty. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's not that yeah. good, or else you'd still be listening. Yeah. What the heck? Keep it on, yeah. Ben. Have you heard of fasting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't need to eat. <laughs> um, and, and do you think that the accessory work is really helping, or it's just slowed you down, or you think the actual movements are you no? Know, it's it's working. I think it's helping. Like my, so I had like with my hip with the nerve. I didn't just have nerve pain. Like I had bursitis in my hip with that, which then led led to like I don't know. I just had a whole heap of pain in my hip. Like I couldn't squat. I just like couldn't squat 100 kilos on a good day. Like it was just awful. And I went to a physio and he gave me like three exercises and I did them every day and now I don't have any hip pain. And what are those exercises? Um, I do like this thing called like a traction drill. It's kind of like a stretch, like a, a bit of like a, I don't know, stretch thing. I do side plank, like external rotations. So with my legs, like if I'm in a side plank, I have a band and I just like bring one leg up and back down. And then I do a goblet squat before I squat. <laughs> They're the three. The goblet squat, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, is this, what's this, a lateral? Oh, this is for shoulder stability. Oh, it's similar to that though. So imagine his arms like my leg. Okay. You have so a rubber put, band on it like that? Yeah. So I put the band like around my hip. Yeah. And then I basically like internally rotate my knee and then like squeeze my glute and pull it back out. Do you ever catch yourself just um, uh, flexing your butt muscles? No. No. Oh. Because you've seen people, you've seen people like that, right? Um, like when they stand, you, they, they stand, they're squeezing their butt. Yeah, like right. Yeah, you've seen that, right? Maybe. I don't know. I've never thought about it. And those people usually when you see them naked, they'll have like a little, uh, like a, uh, you can see when someone squeezes their butt, like the muscle goes in there. and you, you Like, on, oh, the yeah, on, like the, on the sides of the hip. Yeah, like it goes in, like comes concave. Yeah, right. So that's, it's well, not from that. Just... It's not from you like just flexing it or holding my, it. My pain? Yeah. No, no, because no. because because that no. that because it, was... it says it's the muscle clamping down, so it's like a cramp. The piriformis. Yeah. Um. Well, no, I had bursitis in my hip, so bursitis is like the bursa sac being like inflamed. So uh -huh. my hip was like sore to touch. It was like it was like I couldn't you couldn't touch it, um, and that was from doing like a bunch of dumbbell thrusters, which, um, yeah, wrecked me. And then I don't know why it hung around for so long because eventually the bursitis went away. So I'm not really sure why. Yeah, I don't know. I so. But don't these know. exercises have really helped me. Bursitis, a painful condition that affects the small fluid-filled sacs called bursa that cushion the bones, tendons, yeah. and muscles near your joints. Mm. Yeah. So bursitis is basically like those sacs. They like are inflamed, and then they're um, they're like swollen. You never want an inflamed sac. <laughs> it's horrible. I, I bet. Think, I don't think I've ever had one of those. <laughs> okay. So, so, and, and those are from Daisy too. Oh, no, no, no. Those are from no. your physio. Those three movements. Yeah. They were from the physio. But Did then you share the those with Daisy? Were you like, Daisy, I got something for you? Um, well, she probably already knew about them. Like, I see her doing the side plank external rotations often. Like, she's so on the ball. Um, but yeah, I started doing those and then I started doing a bunch of upper body ones too because we have 
well, at Wolfden, they have like a bodybuilding area upstairs. So like at the end of our sessions when me and Daisy would train, we'd go upstairs and she'd be like, all right, we're going to do lap pull downs and like pal off press and a bunch of bodybuilding stuff. So when I was training down there, we'd do that. So then when I came home, I just started, you know, figuring out ways to do similar exercises. Yeah. And, and, and things have gotten better. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Savon can't, Savon can't squat a hundred kilos on a good day either. <laughs> can't do it on a bad day. Can and I, I uh, that's why he wants all this info. Oh well, you should maybe you should start goblet squatting before you squat. No, I don't. I don't even. I, you, you, the only squat I ever do, I only do a couple kinds of squats. I I hold a, a D ball in the in the front. Okay. And I do a lot of squats like that. Forty pounds usually. I started recently yep. trying to get a little stronger again because the open was so embarrassing for me. So I'll wear a thirty pound weight vest and hold a forty pound ball and do okay. and do a hundred squats like just like bodybuilding style, like ten on the minute for ten minutes. Yeah, nice. While I watch TV or I don't know. That's good. Yeah. But I, I don't I don't ever I don't ever put a barbell on my back. Maybe you should do that with a booty band around your legs. Booty what what's a booty band around my legs? Oh the, you know, the like thing around booty band? No, what's that? Like a little mini a little mini elastic band. Why to force me to drive my knees out? Yeah. So when I goblet squat, it's mostly the booty band that's helping me. But I don't know. My hips are fine. I'm good. Oh well. Then yeah. I only have You're one. Right. I only have this issue and lower back. Do you have any lower back pain? Uh, yeah, I have like had a fair bit. Mm, I do like sucks. ab stuff for that. Like what? What? Tell me what ab stuff you do. Like dead bugs, um, bird dogs. I do like little crunch ups. Side planks are good. Oh yeah, dead bugs. My wife does dead bugs. Yeah, and then a bird dog too. Look up a bird dog. It's like Shh. the opposite. She swears by the dead bug. And, you know, my back will sometimes be so bad that she'll mm. just be like lay down and walk me through a session of dead bugs. I don't yeah. – this is the, – and the ones I do are – I mean, people are going to laugh. The ones I do are way less aggressive than this one. Way less aggressive. I usually keep one foot, one foot down. Oh, really? Yeah. But it works. It works. Like after 10 minutes of that shit, I'm all better. You should look up um, for you, Savan. Yes. It's probably not that interesting for the How podcast, dare you? I'm 52 years old. You can't tell me anything I don't know. What are you doing? Oh, okay. I, I won't tell you my secrets. No, no, tell me, tell me, tell me. <laughs> tell me, tell me. Um, you should, the physio told me to, to do McGill's Big Three. Uh, can you spell that for me? So M-C-G-I-L-L. Uh-huh. Big Three. B-I-G. Yeah, three. So there's like three <laughs> exercises. It's bird dogs, side planks, and like these crunch up things, and they're they're like good feedback. McGill. It's all cool. The only core I do is I do uh, leg lifts. Oh yeah. And those are probably horrible for my back. Yeah, they're the crunch ups. Oh yeah, so yeah. These, That's the like, kind of subtle shit my wife has me do. Just like yeah, subtle these shit like burn. This. These are like they look like nothing and they burn so bad. Yeah, I keep one knee bent like that too. Okay. Yeah. So curl and up. And then the next one is like a side plank. Isometric curl up. Yep. I don't know what the fuck is the difference. Between, oh, oh, you hold it. Nice. No, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then if you keep going. Yeah, here we go. So you do a then, yep, side plank. And you basically hold for like 10 seconds. And then you come down and you go back up and hold again for 10 seconds. And it, he's like, oh, I thought he was thrusting forward. So he's coming up. Yeah, oh, yeah, so he was just doing it on his knees, and then you can progress to, like, your feet. Oh, look, you can see him shaking. Look, you can see him shaking. Mm, it's hard his work. Yeah, his shirt's vibrating. And here we go, the bird dog. Oh, yeah, I do those. My wife would have me do those, too. Okay. Mm. So it's all, like, low back pain is often, like, either glute-related or, like, back, uh, core. you need stronger core. How about my bed? My bed's a fucking – I think my bed's fucked. Oh, yeah, maybe. That can play into it, too. Do you have a good bed? Um, well, I just got a new pillow like four days ago, and I've literally slept the best four nights I've slept in the last like two years with this new pillow. So before that, I'd say no, but now I'm like living. Uh, uh, is this thin pillow or thick pillow? Nah, it's like a th it's a thick memory foam pillow, except before I had a memory foam pillow that was like, you know those ones that are like this? And they're yeah. like low on one side and high on the other. Yeah. And I literally had neck pain like so bad. Like I would wake up in the middle of the night and my neck would hurt. I'd have a headache. So I just got a memory foam one that's like just normal pillow shaped. Yeah. And um, it's so good. 
one of the things that um, I train myself to do th- through doing that energy body is I don't use any, I don't use any pillow or I try not oh, to really. Yeah. Because then, then I'm Ooh. even, I'm a little less comfortable. Like, uh, and Ooh. so I, it allows me to stay awake mm-hmm. longer. The second yeah, I get, wow. a pill, like, and if I just turn on my side, I'm out. Really? Yeah. Like, you know, those lizards, if you put them on their back, they just go unconscious. I'm like that. Yeah, if I just roll on my side, I'm out. Yeah. Right. So you don't use any pillow. I try not to. If I do, I use a really skinny one, like like a towel folded in half. Yeah, yeah. One time um, someone told me that I asked like a myotherapist what pillow I should use and he told me no pillow. Yeah. But I don't think I could sleep well like that. <clears throat> if you make it to the um, semifinals, well, even yes. – oh, Yeah, well, this isn't going to sound nice. Uh, I'm about to say. You're Australian. You got thick skin. If if um, yeah. if you make it to semifinals, I'd love to have you on again. I'd love to hear about it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, this was let's, fun as uh, this was like the best hour twenty of my life. Oh, good. Thank you. I'm glad you had yeah, fun. Thanks this for having fun me. Too. Yeah, this flew by. You're awesome. Yeah, I know. Now I've got to go coach and tell everyone about how fun this was, and they'll all be like, "I don't know who Savan is." I'll be like, "You need to listen." Hey, if this wasn't uh, if you weren't Australian, this would be a shit show. 23 year old in America is the fucking worst interview in the world. I mean, you, you Austra- oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, well, I'm glad I'm, I'm thanks so much for having me. This is really fun. Yeah. Say hi to everyone back there and, uh, and, and stay in touch. I will. Thank you so much. I'll see you soon. Hopefully, hopefully I'm qualified and then I can come back. Yeah. I'm excited for you. I think you are. Thank you so much. See you soon. All right, dear. Bye Haley Adam. Bye. Bye. God, that could have gone. Oh, Haley, I forgot to tell you something. Shit. In the beginning of the show, she said she said something about global warming. I forgot to tell her there's no such thing, and she better not teach our five the five year olds to twelve year olds that there is global warming. Please, uh, Dan Guerrero, she carried you, Sevon. She was good. She was good. I haven't eaten today. It's my fasting day. I'm I'm hitting probably. 24 hours right now all i have to do is get off the show with you guys and go to bed and get my 36 in I'm a bit of a mess <laughs> uh-oh what is this uh um oh geez God damn it. So <clears throat> I live on this street and so so there's this big city over the hill for me. It's called San Jose, California. It's like one of the bigger cities in the United States, I'd say. Maybe 10th largest city in the United States. Let's see. I don't even know if that's true. Let me, let me see. I'm making shit up. Uh, uh, San Jose, California, 10th biggest city let me see if i type that into google uh has five four hundred eighty seven thousand. the bay area is no longer one of the 10 biggest in the uh is san jose the 10th largest city in the united states san jose drops out of 10 largest cities oh okay it's number 12 now all right fine um and it's where it's, it's basically silicon valley it's basically where all the um uh it's like apples there and um facebook and amazon they're not really in san jose but they're in the suburb like basically there's in, in my mind there's like santa cruz then you go over the mountain there's san jose and then there's san francisco but people who live around here probably be like that's not how it is but just bear with me that's how it is so as you go north it's my town santa cruz then san jose and then uh san francisco and I before th- there's a the, the road from San Jose to my town's uh, Santa Cruz is a 17 mile drive through windy fuck mountain like mountain range through a redwood forest massive. No one wants to do the drive. It's horrible. So because of that, even though I'm so close to this metropolis, I'm crazy isolated. Right. Santa Cruz is crazy isolated. You think I should get a haircut? Don't make me insecure about my hair. I'm already like so like I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing with my beard or my hair. Try not to think about it. So there's this high, but and it's a four lane, it's a four lane highway, two lanes in each direction. It's windy through the mountains. Before they built that road, there was a, another road. It's called old San Jose road. And that's, that's the road that I kind of live on. And it, it's like a nothing road. 
it is like just hairball is all get out. It's just two lanes, one in each direction, no divider, windy as shit, crazy road. So, all, all, and it's kind of, I, I, some people make fun of me for this, but it's, I, it's up in the country. I'm up in the country, right? My neighbors have donkeys and shit. But, but not like, not like the way, like my neighbor has horses too, but they're like prize horses. You know what I mean? They're like retired prize horses. I'm a sucker for a fresh haircut. All right, fine. Haircut it is. So, oh, you know about, you know, I'm going to talk about the bridge, the bridge. I am going to talk about a bridge. So <clears throat> I live, I'm a corner house. Like I could say I live on old San Jose road, or I could say I live on this other road. And up on my road, there's like, I'm making this up, 17 residents out here in the middle of nowhere. And they want to put together a, a committee that, um, they, they want to put together like they're, they're trying to make it so everyone gives money every single month to uh, like put in the bank in case the road ever goes away. Right. Like gets washed away or gets damaged or road maintenance. That's what it is. Road maintenance. And, and, and like, I don't want to just tell me how much I fucking owe. I don't want to go to any fucking meetings. I don't want to meet anyone. So she sends me this text. I think, or it's a he. I don't fucking know who it is. Hi, Sevon. Does April 27th at 9.30 a.m. work for you for a quick neighbor meeting? <clears throat> I don't, I don't want to go to a neighbor meeting. I don't want to go to a neighbor meeting. I don't, I don't. Can someone like, can someone like tell me why I should go to the neighbor meeting? Can you talk me into going to the na neighbor meeting? Uh, your taxes don't fix the road. I don't know. I don't even know. I don't even care. Just tell me what it is. hundred dollars a month. Fine. Just tell me, just tell me and I'll tell my, I'll tell my uh, wife to just send Haley. I don't want any fucking Muslim and Haley. What is this? Jesus. What is this? This is crazy, this video someone just sent me. This has nothing to do with building a road. That cannot be good for a Concept 2 bike having it on the beach. Anyway, look. Uh, don't go. I know, it should be just that easy, right? Yeah, I don't want to... I don't want to sign anything. I'm not interested in like, uh, I bet, I bet that after attending one neighbor meeting, someone would not be invited back to others. I won't. I, 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 but the thing is, is, Oh, send Rosemary. That, Hey, that's not a fucking bad idea. Jesus Christ. That's fucking brilliant. Ken. Oh my God. That's brilliant. I feel like calling my mom on in, on the air and pressuring her to do it. Just call her right now. Hi, mom. My mom might do it. I wonder what my wife's going to say. Why Why don't they text my wife? Oh, yeah. I, yeah, someone sent me to the video of Bella on her C2 bike. All that Sam will mess it up, I think. That girl was on the show, I think. Let me, let me see if it if it's the same. 
Oh, yeah, this girl was on the show. Oh, shit, it's on her Instagram. I really want to get Fikowski on the show. Let me see. I've been bugging him a little bit. Damn. I'm all over the place. Someone sent me this. I haven't watched this yet. I haven't watched this yet, but let me just play this for you. Let's see what this is while we decompress on this fine Sunday evening. Oh, who do I have on the show tomorrow? Oh, nobody. I don't even have a show scheduled tomorrow. Can that fucking be? I don't see a show on the calendar. I don't see a show for Tuesday either. I bet you Sousa's left this all wide fucking open because we have the quarterfinals coming up. I, maybe I'm just anxious because of the quarterfinal shows. Here, let's let's listen to this. Let's chill together for a sec, guys. You you good? No, there's a show tomorrow. Hi, Seth. There'll definitely be a show. I already set my alarm. <laughs> okay, here we go. I wear uh, a lot of uh, Axe body spray. <laughs> But I live in a black neighborhood and it's called Ask Body Spray. <laughs> and if you don't get that joke, then you're not racist. <laughs> I wear a. Damn. Damn. I, I think I told a joke just like that once, um, very similar to that on the show. And. Uh, James Townsend was in the chat and he, he made, he, he made a comment and then I quickly text him. I go, dude, you're making me sweat. He goes, that's the point. He's a good dude. I should have him on more often. The last two shows I did with him were great. It was a little, I, I, th I think we've really warmed up to each other. The two of us. Oh, do you guys want to see some God stuff? Anyone have time for that? What are you guys doing? Do you guys want to do some God shit? Or should I save this for the morning? This is fu this is this is pretty good. I kind of am tempted to send this to Greg. Um always time for God. Okay, fuck it. Ken Walter says there's always time for God. Okay, here we go. Uh I y y the first line got cut off. Um, the guy says, uh, you can't prove religion. Oh, look, Brooke Entz liked this. It, Brooke Entz actually sent this to me. I wasn't going to say that, but now that she liked you can see she liked it. She sent this to me, uh, I don't know, today or something. Okay, listen to this. This is pretty good. This is pretty good. I, I, I was, I was actually just for the sake of the debate. I liked it. This is, this is right up my alley. Remember though, I am not a believer. I think only fools believe, but here we go. Or let me let me phrase that. Not only it's not just fools believe, it's just that if you're not conscious that you're a believer as opposed to a knower, then then you're a fool. Like remember, there's nothing to believe. But here we go. Here we go. Ready? And and this is this. The, now that I think about this, is now that I'm saying this, this kind of downgrades God. This kind of downgrades God. It it like brings God down to the material plane it's kind of sad but but it's really good okay here we go uh hiller went in on brooke he did where i didn't see that yet i'm behind i'm two two or three uh hiller videos behind okay here we go this is but this is good this is pretty good it's all myth it's myth you can't prove religion you can't prove it prove it to me that zgc's existed prove to me that these there are no right. problem i'll prove to you jesus if you first of all prove to me napoleon I'll prove to you, Jesus, if you first prove to me George Washington. I'll prove to you, Jesus, if you first know I said no Washington don't, Carver. Don't prove, no, don't prove the person's existence. I'm saying prove the ideas that the person talks about. Prove to me what there's a heaven that's up there. Prove to me that there's you know this truth that your God truly exists. Prove to me that these precepts of the Bible are truly what true revelation. Prove to me that these things are actually there. I'm a empiricist. Prove to me that they're there. 
All right, I'll do that. If, first of all, you prove to me that your taste buds are telling you the truth when they tell you you're drinking sour milk. The secondary best, some things you can't prove, so then you fall back on, you fall upon on second base. things you can't prove. Sir, I'm sorry, I haven't communicated clearly. Sir, you can't prove a thing. To prove means to show it cannot be another way. You cannot prove a thing in life. When you I as a thinking human being don't base your life on proof. You base your life on evidence. You base your life on evidence. You base your life on evidence. That's why I wanted to show it to Greg. Like, this is it. This is this is the broken science thing. This is just predictive value. You base your life on evidence. You don't really know fucking anything. I remember when Greg said, hey, all he was explaining it to me. Like, I was having trouble understanding what he was saying. He's like, you can't even say all crows are black, even though no one's ever seen a crow that's not black, because you can't see all crows. And so it's just evidence. What does the evidence point to? And you follow the evidence. To prove means to show. It cannot be another way. What can you prove in life? Prove to me we're having this conversation right now. You can't prove it. We might be dreaming. Someone might have dropped some drugs in our tea. But the evidence is we're having this conversation. That's why I'm hanging in there with you. That's why you're hanging in there with me. Evidence. Okay, so the evidence is God exists. The evidence is the order and the design of the cosmos point to an intelligent mind. Moral absolutes point to some moral giver, lawgiver. Life comes from life. Never once have I ever seen life come from non-life. An atheist is someone who says, oh yeah, at some point, somewhere, at one time, in La La Land, life came from non-life. And I'm saying, uh-uh. All of my experience shows me life comes from life. Yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, this this guy's good. Never once have I seen life come from non-life. Fourth piece of evidence, free will. If there is no God, you're just a hunk of biochemical reactions. That's all I am. You're not free. You're determined by your biochemical reactions. So am I. I'm sorry. That one's a little flimsy because... No one's, there's so few people who are re really willing to test if they have free will. So few people. You'll be lucky if you meet one person in your entire existence who is willing to take the test of free will. And so that one's flimsy. I judge myself at night. I say, you know, Cliff, when you spoke to that student, that was pretty rude. When you spoke to that student, boy, you displayed a lot of patience, man. Tomorrow, do that again and don't do that. I judge myself. I critique myself. I'm free. I don't have to do what I do. Well, if I'm free, it means there's more to me than just my biochemical makeup. There's a soul, a personality, an I that goes beyond the biochemical. I have a free will. Well, the free will can only exist if there's some type of God who creates me biochemically, but also gives me a will that's not totally dependent upon my biochemical reactions. That's why I believe God exists. Now, why do I believe Jesus is reliable? Because the historical evidence of the way he lived, what he taught, how he died, how he rose from the dead, points to his credibility. If you live like Jesus lived, if you teach what he taught, if you died the way he died, loving and forgiving your enemies, and if three days later you rise from the dead, sir, I will listen very closely to everything you have to say. Because the evidence is you're trustworthy. So that's why I believe in Jesus. Does that make any sense? Slightly, yes, but still. You can't prove religion. It's all myth. It's Man, myth. And, and furthermore, the evidence shows in my in my assessment, and although it's not empirical, but just through my assessment, is that people who do follow the values that are come out of Christianity are the happiest people. The people who follow them and use them on themselves. Those are that they are like lighthearted, easygoing, great sense of humor, intelligent, fun, free, generous thoughtful people and those that don't aren't so there but 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 you can but you can be on that pathway with those values without have coming to the conclusion that uh christianity is is the way all right love you guys uh, i'll be here tomorrow morning um great having Haley adams on um, and we will see you tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Love you guys. Oh, uh, pool boy. 
send me Julia's address and shirt size, and I'll send her out uh, more CEO shirts. All right. Uh, love you guys.